Everybody, 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 everybody. Here we go. Study hall, y'all. Got my frog cup. Got my machines. Got a few books. Hey, Chris, how's it going? How we doing, Jay? Sarah, I have fairies. How we doing? I'm really excited about study hall today because I have a very special guest, as you maybe saw from the thumbnail. Shout out to Jay on the thumbnail. It's the author of a book that I've been working on, making a song for, called Carrying All Around Me. And she's going to come on the show in a little bit, but first I'm going to work a little bit more on the song and just get a chill vibe going. And we're going to watch a video that I helped with. I did some filming on, I did some drone filming, and I did some other camera work on, and uh, it's a visual portfolio of some of Tia's work, her mural work, so we'll see some of that, and then she'll come up, but first, I'm going to jam out a little bit. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I think everybody's getting back to going to school and going to work today. So we might uh, we might miss some folks because people are getting back in the groove of things, but that's okay. We're just going to proceed to give you what you need and maybe you can watch it later too. So I'm in my happy place. group going here.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Good night, good afternoon, good morning. It's your boy Wes. We're doing the study hall this morning. Getting a nice little groove going before our guest comes on. Today we have Tia Richardson, the author of Carrying All Around Me. And right now I'm working on the beats for the song video of Carrying All Around Me. Tia. Tia's in the chat. She's about to be on screen in a little bit. First, we're going to watch a video. Well, first, I'm going to perform a little bit of the book over this beat I'm working on. And then we're going to watch a little video that I helped to make of Tia's work. a wonderful muralist, artist in the city, educator of communities, and I was really lucky to get to see her perform her book at Rooted MKE, which is where my sweatshirt's from. This is a great bookstore down the street from my house, from where I'm at right now. <laughs> and I thought... We got to have her on the show. Because that's what study hall is all about. So let me get this beat here. We're just going to keep it rolling today. It's going to be a fun day. I know everybody's getting back to school now, getting back to the routine of things. And so that's what we're here to help with. Get you excited about learning. Or get you excited about being back at work. Something nice to listen to. Something calming. I think Tia's going to do a little painting on this episode. Which is going to be really fun while I work on the song some more. also going to talk about the workbook the carrying all around me workbook so there's this book the storybook and then there's also the workbook which if you're a parent teacher therapist youth worker of any kind or just a human being that likes to exercise your brain exercise your emotional intelligence this book is for you I did, a, I did one of the uh, exercises last night, and I felt so much better after doing it. I felt like, wow, I want to do every single one of these. And I mean, I'm a 39-year-old man-child, but I guess uh, it's, it's for me, and it's for you, and it's for everyone. So 
I'm going to take you guys through this with Tia in a little bit. I'm just going to play around with the book a little bit before we go into the video. How's that sound? How's everybody doing today? What are you learning about? Drop something in the chat that you're learning about, something you've learned recently or something you want to learn for 2023. Because we're always talking about what we're learning on Study Hall, you know what I'm saying? That sounds fun. Sounds like you're going to be an internet whiz. Hi, my name is Mara, and I love to explore. One warm day after school, I took a walk down a bright sunny street in my neighborhood. Butterflies danced ahead, and birds chirped at me with curiosity. Yeah, the sun shone warmly on my skin, floating on a buttery ray of light. I saw all kinds of messages, some were kind and caring, but others were not. Who could they be for? They were like, you are smart. Love and fear and peace, beautiful, caring. You can do it if you have courage. You can do it with courage. I love this book. I kept walking, and soon I came across a community garden. There were fish in a small, sparkling pond and flowers all around. Sunlight bounced off of their petals one by one and the smell of their sweet perfume invited me in. All of the flowers were unique in their own way. Yeah, it was tulips and roses and daisies and daffodils. Yeah, it was tulips and roses and daisies and daffodils. What? Tulips and roses and daisies and daffodils. It was tulips. Tulips, 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 roses and daisies and daffodils. Yeah, it was tulips and roses and daisies and daffodils. <laughs> yeah. Some looked happy and content, while others were droopy and sad. Some stood tall, but others slumped. No matter what, each one opened at the warm touch of sunlight. But something was wrong in another part of the garden. Things looked very different. Those flowers weren't getting any messages. One unhappy rose struggled to grow in a place that was too dark and unsafe. She stretched and strained her long neck, trying to reach some light with no love. No love, no love, no love, with no love. There was a big rock block and a ray of sunlight almost crushing her. A message of hope tried to get through but couldn't. See, that's the message of hope right there. It's getting blocked by the rock. The flowers under the rock. It's, the hope's getting blocked by the rock. See, there's the rose right there. In another part of the garden, vines desperately climb over each other in a rush to reach the top of a small fence. Sunlight peeked through. Spilling over the edge, it was so crowded that the young, tiny flowers at the bottom were getting trampled. I wondered if the flowers at the bottom felt like the big and happy flowers at the top didn't care. <laughs> My heart sank because I knew what it felt like to be left behind.
Suddenly, I noticed a crack in the sidewalk At my feet, a very lonely tulip struggled to grow all by himself His troubled roots tried to push through the concrete to reach more soil. My heart tugged, but then somewhere in there, I heard a still small voice. It said to me, it said to me, it said to me, everything in the world thrives on a flow of life, light and love. Everything in the world thrives on a flow of light, life and love. You can't see it, but you can feel it. The messages are all around us, and there are caring messages for everyone. Sometimes things don't go as planned, and the flow gets blocked. But when this happens, it causes suffering. I knew some things about suffering That's what it felt like to lose a friend Or fail a test of regret Making a bad choice that hurt someone Once my best friend told me They didn't want to be friends anymore I felt abandoned and lonely Just like the little rose In that moment I needed someone To bring me a caring message But who? Just then a flutter by butterfly Just then A, <laughs> a, a butterfly fluttered by yeah. A butterfly fluttered close by as if to tell me something. I thought I heard her whisper, Mara, I'll be your friend. Mara, I'll be your friend. Trailing from her wings were tiny messages of life, but before I could read them, she flew off. It made me wonder, am I good enough for caring messages? I got enough for a caring message? The voice in my heart continued Even when suffering happens We have to look for the messages That remind us we are still valuable what? Even when suffering happens We have to look for the messages That remind us we are still valuable So even though my best friend Doesn't like me anymore I can still like myself I am a caring person and my good friends accept me for who I am Yeah, they accept me for who I am That's it We can choose the messages we let in We can choose the messages we let in Yeah, we can choose the messages we let in We can choose them, we can choose the messages we let in Alright guys We'll come back to that in a little bit Caring All Around Me by Tia Richardson. Oh my goodness. So much goodness. Hey, Yvonne, how's it going? Thanks for being here. All right. We're going to bring Tia on in a few. But first, I'm going to fade out the beat. And we're going to watch a little part of a video that I helped create. I helped film the drone footage of this. And this is a, a video that is, uh, a, it's about Tia's work. And she actually played the piano that's on in the background of it. And it's on her YouTube channel, which uh, we can bring up uh, her YouTube channel on the ticker on the bottom. And uh, it's really great. And uh, I think she edited it herself and, um, you know, and I helped do some of the filming. And so... We're going to watch a little bit of this, and then we'll bring on Tia. Sound good? All right. Happy study hall, y'all. This is fun. Thank you. 
my life having an ending? Oops. <laughs> All right. I guess that's where we're pausing. Ooh. Well, it looks like Tia's here. You ready to go? You want to give me a thumbs up? You're good? I will bring you in. All right. Cool. Oh, there you are. Hi. Hi, Tia. Hi. How's it going? Good. That, that was that was nice to listen to. Oh, I know. Can we just like have the piano on a little bit in the background, like really low? Or is that sure. gonna Okay. <laughs> it's just so soothing. I think that that our audience really likes it. Um so thanks so much for being here on Study Hall. Thanks for having me. You're our first guest. <laughs> um, and so thanks so much. Um, thanks for letting me, um, you know, film some of these uh, great murals that you've done. Um, ooh, I just want to cut, cut over to this shot quick. You can see that. Um, so you're a very prolific muralist and you've done so many great murals across Milwaukee. Can you just uh, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself as an artist? Just describe yourself as an artist and, um, you know, and then we can get into talking about caring all around me. Sure. Um, I'm a community mural artist. My name's Tia Richardson. For those who um, don't, um, haven't, I haven't been introduced to. And um, we're looking at one of the projects that you were filming in your, in your video. Those were all community engaged. So 
of hundreds of people, volunteers, young people, old people, people from all kinds of walks of life uh, I enjoy working with um, because I believe we, you know, we all have a creative mind as human beings. Every human mind is created by nature. So um, what I like to do is offer people a chance to express themselves, express their feelings through art and um, do that as a community together, acknowledging different challenges a community may be experiencing or individuals. Um, the murals show steps from that to thinking of different choices, you know, they or others can make to help make those better. And then um, as your eye moves across the canvas, what does the future look like as a direct result of those choices? So, um, Thinking like that, thinking along those those lines, those are some of the things that um, the book talks about as well. And just kind of offering a chance for people to be part of, um, for for us, myself included, to be part of something bigger than ourselves. That's fantastic. <sighs> yeah, they're so they're so big, and you know, just like being somebody that uh, you know walks, bikes, drives all around the city of Milwaukee and loves this city uh it's so good to see someone loving the city the back world. with these uh everything can find liberation through love see everything can find liberation through love you said it yourself yes <laughs> everything can find liberation through love that's care that's what caring's about that's what caring's about yes oh. yeah so speaking of caring you decided to go from caring all around the city into caring into book form in caring all around me, your storybook, as well as the workbook right here, which goes along with it, which we'll talk about in a second. But could you tell me why you decided to write a children's book and how yeah. that kind of translated from the work you were doing before? Yeah. And by the way, um, when we, we were, I remember you shooting that mural um, and that was so much fun because you got like, that was one of my first times really doing that for those murals. So, you know, how, how you move the camera and just kind of watching you work the camera and uh, how everything kind of came to life um, through those videos too. That was a lot of fun. So thank you for, for that. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I had a blast. There's so and, much to film. They're just like, I can kind of like roam around in the world of the the mural. You know, I just remember like right here in these shots, I remember filming this, um, you know, the detail, you know, every detail of the, the image and then the whole thing as a big wide hole, you see, you know, it, it kind of just like, can envelop you in color and you know the the lighting and the emotion that it evokes is really powerful it takes you on a journey doesn't it yeah yeah it's a story almost too do you feel like it's a story absolutely i didn't mm. really think of it that way i guess once i started working on the book i realized that my mural speak in stories anyway and that's kind of my natural way, you know, humans, human beings, we love stories. We've been doing storytelling um, throughout history. And mm -hmm. so um, doing, doing the working on the film as well, the editing, putting the pieces together. I think I told you that was, uh, I, I was kind of new to that. So finding out that that kind of work is, um, the way I think and it's just comes together so naturally putting these pieces together so um but the way people relate to the murals the way like you're talking about yourself people walk down the street they um can find themselves in the story somewhere and we make up our own stories so everybody when they look at a mural they can see something different and um so with the storybook the the it started out as um a youth residency this is one of the first story templates um that i made it's kindness all around me that was the original title and this oh. is 10 pages this was a book that i um started as a way to help youth in the foster system 
work through some of the challenges they felt um, they were experiencing, think of ways, you know, those could be made better, create a positive imagery, um, mm -hmm. positive expression, self-expression, self-appreciation. Um, there's like space for journaling and it's a template. So it's fill in the blanks. And Whoa, they put, it's pop up. Yeah. So, so they, yeah. So this is my demo and they each made their own book from come from cover to cover. Um, they each created their own, they drew their own pages. I worked with them. Um, they made their own pop-ups. So I didn't think this would turn into a story, but after a few residencies and just seeing the um, pride on their faces, they can take the book, their own book home. They write themselves into the story. Mm. And then I decided to expand it, add the character Mara, add her friends to it, develop their journey in a oh, way wow. where somebody reading the book, you know, can um, experience their own journey and what's that and what that's like. So wow. it, it's all about making choices. Making choices is a big part of our life. And um, that's where we find our power. So um, in a mural, a lot of the choices are made through the participants in the design process and the community engagement in the workbook it offers people a chance to um create their own journey just yeah. like you know this kind of book started out with working with um the the youth and the residency so does that make sense yeah definitely and that brings us right into the workbook too uh, because i think it's so important that you you know a book you know a book versus a video uh it's it's less of a passive experience right you have to kind of put yourself into it and um you know and especially if you're writing a book that's like very like powerful thing that you can do but if you're reading a book your your mind is working a little bit and it's it's thinking and your your heart and your head are connected and they're they're kind of talking to each other and the the you know the imagery you know that's why i like i like storybooks so much and i like graphic novels and things like that 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 sort of like give you this full experience. It's like watching a movie, but you're making it in your head and yeah. interacting with it. But so to take that a step further, you created the Caring All Around Me workbook, coloring and exercises for healthy relating, which you wrote and illustrated. And this is like essential companion to the book. I think it's, it's, um, you know, there's a lot of great things in here. So it, you know, it ranges for ages. I think it will work for really young kids uh, because of the opportunity for coloring. And then as, as you know, you get older, you know, you can, you can get more into some of the meanings and definitions of words and caring attitudes and gratitude and types of flowers that you can, you know, identify with. <laughs> Like I was like, you know, last night I was like, oh, what flower do I identify with? And I know when you asked the question at uh, Rooted MKE, when I first got introduced to this book, um, you know, I was like, I'm a chrysanthemum because I like the, the book of chrysanthemum. <laughs> <laughs> the book uh, of chrysanthemum? Well, there's a book called Chrysanthemum, um, which I'll probably uh, bust that out in the springtime uh, when the flowers come out, but maybe I'll bring it out a little early. Um, that's just a, a, a beautiful children's book about about the flower of chrysanthemum in a garden. Um, but do you want to talk about the workbook a little bit? And then I did do I did do one of the exercises, and so we can we can talk about that. Sure. Awesome. I was going to ask. So for everybody joining us, the uh, mm -hmm. one of the exercises is if you were a flower, what kind of flower would you be? So mm -hmm. for you, Wes, what is it about a chrysanthemum that you find yourself in or reminds you of yourself? Well, that's... <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and I can share mine. Mine wasn't why don't you share? Why don't you share yours first? Yes. If you don't mind. So, Yes. So mine is an iris and that's because um, they come in so many beautiful different colors. My art expresses so many colors. They're beautiful flowers. They're like silk gowns, which I like. Um, mm. So uh, that's, an acti that's an activity that I've done with young people in the past. And it's fun to watch 
them think about well what kind of flower um because every flower has their own qualities and then as human beings we all have our own unique qualities and strengths so the workbook mm -hmm. um offers lots of little chances like that nuggets for people to um self-reflect and think about what they might discover inside themselves new potentials um through relating to the world or life around us um things that we're familiar with every day we might not think about ourselves as much um go going through life and so a lot of that creative thinking gets kind of buried as, as we get older um so helping young people develop those skills at an early age it helps with problem solving, it helps with confidence, self-esteem. Um, I see somebody in the comment, they're a lotus. There's a poem in the in the book, there's a lotus poem. Um, and there's, there's an ex exercise where uh, you can go learn about different flowers, how their roots grow. So one of the things I learned about a lotus is its roots grow in thick river mud. Um, actually, can I read the poem? Yeah. Okay, Please. so this is the Lotus poem. What page is that? At? It's on page 24 in the workbook. Okay, 24. All right. I am a lotus flower. I have roots that grow in thick river mud. Every night I close and sink under the river water to sleep where it is safe because my thick waxy petals keep the mud from sticking. Every morning, the rising sun wakes me from my sleep. Then I rise above the water and open each petal just as beautiful as the day before. So we're talking about resilience on that page um, and how the Lotus can kind of embody resilience. So, but each person can define it for themselves, why they might identify with the flower. So I see, you know, water and surfer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's so cool. Thanks for sharing that poem. Yeah. Um, I was just uh, quickly looking up chrysanthemum <laughs> and I see it has a lot of different meanings uh, when you when you Google it. And one of them is friendship, happiness and well-being is how it's symbolized in the United States is what it says in Google. It also says spiritually it represents longevity, fidelity, joy, and optimism. And so I would say I can definitely relate to that. It also says it it, it has uh, something to do with uh, death and grief. Um, and so that's important to uh, think about too. Um, so I think it kind of like it, maybe it's like the, the friendship and, and being, um, being, open to, you know, the full spectrum of emotion. Yeah, cycles of life and transition. Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, these activities kind of help us as adults, we can el elaborate and just kind of help kids think about those things as we, you know, or mm -hmm. any adults like yourself, Wes, you know, you're talking about, um, you know, um, this is all, you know, relating to self. Then there's other activities in the book that talk about relating to others in the environment. Um, so, you know, that idea of caring all around us, um, it's self care and it's also care for one another in our community. Um, and yeah, so it's all related. Absolutely. Uh, and and speaking of which, it's it's uh, another thing that on the next page um, is the gratitude page. And that's the one that I actually uh, took the time to do. And I was attracted to it because it's it's about gratitude. And I really uh, I care a lot about gratitude and I think about it a lot. And um, and as I read further, the, the can I read the workshop and just kind of what it what the, the work is? So it's, uh, you know, in big letters, it says gratitude, opening each petal one by one. And there's this big flower here and all of the, the roots of the flower is the picture. And it says, think of a situation that you feel stressed about. 
Next to each root, write something about that situation that bothers you. On each petal, write one thing you can appreciate in the present moment. It may or may not be related to the situation. When we feel stress, finding something we can appreciate in the moment can be uplift, uplifting. And when I read that, I was like really uh, intrigued. And I was like, because I, you know, I get, I get so stressed out about stuff. And, um, you know, and I try to, I try to, you know, respond to that with, with gratitude and being grateful for all of the good things in, in my life and in the world that we can appreciate. And so I, I got really into writing down the things that I'm stressed about because I've never done that before. I've never thought, oh, I should, because usually when I go to write poetry or, or write a song or something, I, I'm trying to get away from the stress. I'm like, let's think about, you know, things that make me happy and stuff. And so, but when I, when I was like, no, I'm going to write down what stresses me out, that actually really relaxed me. And it was it was like really great. And I wrote down some things like um, I don't like, uh, you know, sometimes it stresses me out to like memorize my lyrics. Sometimes people saying mean things. If I'm running late, that stresses me out, um, you know, and feeling kind of behind on my work. Um, and I know that kids in school can probably relate to that because, mm -hmm. you know, you got homework and you, mm -hmm. you, sometimes it's like, there's so many things and maybe you're really good at one subject and then another subject you're not as good at, or, you know, you need to work on more and, um, that can be really stressful. And absolutely. Can, yeah. And, and so for, um, for each of those, the ideas to, um, write something that you appreciate in the, in the moment. And I know myself too, I can relate to um, feeling like I'm behind on um, work, um, being late, um, not doing my best, you mm -hmm. know? So what are some of the things that you appreciate in the moment at the time? So I'm, I really appreciate uh, my family. That's my friends and family. Um, I, I got to combine them into one pedal. And uh, because I think that, you know, those are the people that I kind of can go to to maybe vent about it or they can maybe help me calm down. Um, I'm really thankful for food. Sometimes that can calm me down because sometimes yeah. maybe I'm actually stressed because I'm hungry. I think, oh, yeah, um, a lot of us for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the last that was the last thing I put <laughs> that stresses me out is, is being hungry. Yeah. Um, you know, I appreciate like mother nature and my home and creativity, art, you know, water, food, you know, like it's like, well, I already said food and like mm -hmm. spirit. It's just yeah. kind of like all of these things, um, you know, and it was just nice to kind of have like this whole flower to write all of those things in and sort of focus on. That's great. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. And, you know, there's like a ton of other ones of these this is like you know 62 pages long um so all filled with things that you can do to help calm yourself down and you know encourage uh healthy relating i think that's so important for kids and especially now kind of like we're coming out of uh the pandemic times when a lot of really young kids that was like the their first experience of like school and of relating was, you know, kind of like in this really rare time of isolation. And um, so I'm, I'm imagining that like we're having as, you know, we're teaching kids, we're having to, you know, deal with uh, uh, the connections between each other. Can you talk a little bit about that? Why is that so important? Absolutely, I can. Um, I've been in a few schools recently this fall um, doing murals. So I do mur mural residencies and I've worked with a couple of schools. One of them, um, it was clear the principal was, was expressing this as well um, to me. And uh, some of the teachers were saying there's um, the grades that were that were isolated during the pandemic that had online learning, they're struggling with social emotional skills and there there's a lot more fighting and teasing bullying name calling things like mm -hmm. that um um i want to say it was the third third and fourth grades this year 
So mm-hmm. they're really looking for outlets and ways to help um, the students work together. And the murals are collaborative. Um, the workbook, this can be done in classrooms. I've got a residency, an author residency coming up um, next week, actually, at a, an elementary school working with each grade. So I'll read the story and we'll do an activity from the book. And what I'm finding is um, teachers and parents are s- looking at it and seeing it as an outlet for kids to express themselves. And like you were saying, you know, and myself included, one of the reasons I started doing art, once we get our feelings out on paper or whatever's in my in our minds or our heads, yeah. once we get that on paper, it's outside of us. It's outside of our body and it, it releases our nervous system a little bit. It, it, it kind of, you know, takes it from in our nervous system to outside our body on paper where we have some control over what's happening. We can then make choices. And as artists, you might relate to this as a musician, we, we're making choices all the time when we create something. Mm-hmm. And so there's a feeling um, that comes with that it, it, that uh, can be centering, it can be calming, it can offer a new perspective on things. So when we write down a challenge, um, I'm feeling stressed about this or this isn't working so well, you know, I'm struggling with homework or whatever that might be. Um, and then we have a chance to think about it from a new perspective, which coloring can do. Coloring can relax the mind, oh, open yeah. up the open up the mind a little bit. Um, and it's much easier to, to look at what we've just written or drew in a different light. So then we don't, it, it, we, it, it puts some um, distance between us and that. And so with kids, they're, they're so open-minded. It, it's, um, um, so teachers are asking for this kind of thing. Parents are very open to this kind of idea. And um, I'm seeing a lot more mindfulness tools, a lot more things happening that teachers and principals are offering in their schools, um, like meditation in all across the district, all across the nation, mindfulness Mm -hmm. is becoming more mainstream. Um, Mm -hmm. There's meditation activity in the book. There's some, there's some therapeutic watercolor. uh, There's a therapeutic watercolor exercise in the book. So um, Mm. yeah, what you're talking about, I've seen, yeah, this just this semester (laughs) for sure. Yeah. And speaking of watercoloring, did you want to do a little watercoloring exercise? here today sure what do you think yeah yeah um maybe maybe you could watercolor a little bit and i could uh make some musical soundtrack yeah i'll watercolor to your music okay um do you mind if i uh, work on my carrying all around me song sure um and i'll just share this with people what i'm about to do is using the primary colors and it's not an art, it's not trying to do art. It's really just, um, this is this is something that I do with with uh, youth or adults. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exercise um, and it's just about free expression. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna do a painting to music. Um, I don't talk while I paint. When, when we do this with groups, it's just a silent activity. Uh, and mm-hmm. I normally play some music that um, helps calm the nervous system. And um, there's instructions for that in the back of the workbook too, if you wanted to do this on your own and you have the book. So um, yeah, feel free to watch and I'll just, I'll I'll paint for a few minutes and I don't know what it's gonna come out to look like, but uh, (laughs) I'm sure with the music behind behind us, um, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, it's just, it's just kind of about, you know, self-discovery as well too. Great, fantastic. So everybody, you know, make sure, uh, can we get the, uh, the link to where people can buy the book? Um, it's, uh, cosmic-butterfly.com is your website. And, yeah. uh, we, we have, we have it up. It'll, it'll come up in a second. Uh, okay. and, um, yeah, and that's where you can, you know, get the book and you can get the workbook there. You can also go to the publisher website. What's the name of the publisher? Orange. Orange uh, hat publishing. Orange hat publishing. Orange hat. I have an orange hat. Cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, 
I love orange. I painted Maybe my house wear orange. Your orange hat. Oh dang it! I should have. That would, that would have been good. Hmm. Next time. Shout out um, to Orange Hat Publishing. They they were great to work with. They published both the children's book and the workbook. Oh man, they did a great job, and I'm you know I'm really able to find it all over. It's really easy to find on the internet. Um, but especially I want people to support their, uh, you know, local bookstores and shout out to Rooted MKE, um, which is where I really got inspired, uh, to work with Tia on her book. And it was amazing. You know, I think it was really great to hear you read the book yourself. Um, and so, you know, we might do some, some work with that. I know you want to do some, some video stuff with, uh, with the book project. So, Everyone, make sure you check out Tia's YouTube page and, you know, check out the website. There's a lot of good resources on there if you want to bring Tia to your school. Um, you know, sounds like that's something that you like to do. Yeah, and if I'm not in your state or for by any means, teachers can work with this material in your classrooms. You can buy the workbook on my website or, or online, um, order it through your local bookstore and... Uh, feel free to adapt the activities. There's guides in there for parents, teachers, therapists, and, and caregivers um, for, you know, different ways to, to work with it and adapt it. Fantastic. Um, all right. Why don't we get into the exercise then? Okay. Sound good? I'm gonna, Thanks so much um, for doing this, Tia. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm going to readjust my camera. So okay. um, I think I'll black out. For a minute yeah i'll take you out for a second and then we'll bring you back in sound good okay. thank you okay mm -hmm. all right peace <laughs> oh wow that's tia richardson she's gonna get her camera set up for painting and i'm gonna dive back into this and i'm gonna pick up where i left off before uh we went to the break and uh oh Thanks so much, all of, all of you, for your uh, kind messages uh, throughout this. I've been seeing them go through in the chat as we've been talking. Um, you know, any way you can help spread the word and help get this book out there. Let's make this book go viral. Let's make this book be a, a tool for consciousness in the world and growing each other's empathy for each other. I Heart Fairies has hats too. <laughs> all right, hashtag carrying all around me. I've been enjoying working on the music for this story rap. We've had some sessions here. In our hearts, caring is all around us. If you only look, sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Caring is all around us. If you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. That's it. We can choose the messages we let in. We can choose the messages we let in. I went back to the brave Rose who was struggling to grow. In a dark place, I decided to help her get the caring message by moving the rock. The Rose took the message to heart. 
and stood tall and resilient, she was safe again. I feel safe when it feels like I'm being listened to. I feel safe when it feels like I'm being listened to, yeah. Maybe others do too. I feel safe when it feels like I'm being listened to. Maybe others do, too. Then something wonderful happened. The butterfly came back again, fluttering lightly next to the rose. Listening, it was as if the flower was whispering something in her ear. Then the butterfly swooshed close to my heart and gave me the message trailing from her wings it said thank you for caring thank you for caring thank you for caring thank you for caring I smiled and stood taller too next I went back to the tulip growing in concrete using a spoon from my lunchbox I carefully dug him up roots and all and carried him over to the bright side of the garden, his leaves open to the positive messages. Thirsty for life, next to the other flowers, he no longer felt lonely. The message he wanted to share with me was friendship. The message he wanted to share with me was friendship. Friendship, friendship, friendship. The message she wanted to share was friendship. Then I looked at the vines. I saw how they wrapped around each other all the way to the top. They were huggy. It made them stronger. And the luckiest ones made it into the sunlight. They didn't mean to hurt each other, but there just wasn't enough space to move around. I made more space for them by trimming and weeding. The light overflowed with messages like appreciation, understanding, respect, acceptance, abundance. Yeah, respect, understanding, abundance, acceptance, appreciation. Appreciation, acceptance, abundance, understanding, respect, appreciation, acceptance, abundance, understanding, respect, appreciation, understanding, abundance, acceptance, respect, understanding, appreciation. Now there was enough love and light for everyone, even me. Sometimes people need space to understand each other just like the vines. When I need space, I go to my favorite place, sit and think, or write, or daydream. When I do that, it makes me feel better. With all of the sunlight and caring messages streaming in, the garden was a perfect spot. But what about those messages that weren't kind or caring? Looking around, I saw them fall and soak into the ground. I wondered if they would hurt the flower roots under the soil. No, 
the voice gently spoke in my heart again. Those uncaring messages were thought of spoken by other people in the world. If we don't let them in, they go back into the soil as compost. Working with the earth, our friends underground happily munch and chomp and chew the uncaring messages become messages of love yeah the uncaring messages become messages of love oh do you know what happens to every thought we think and every dream we imagine anybody know do you know what happens to every thought we think and every dream we imagine they go unto the world on rays of light. They go out into the world on rays of light. The thoughts we think and imagine go out into the world on rays of light. Rays of light. This filled my heart with so much gratitude it wanted to burst. A beam of light went out from my heart in appreciation of the beauty all around me. Helps others if you only look beam of light went out from my heart a beam of light went out from my heart in appreciation of the beauty around me in the pond fish swam eagerly towards me with bright sparkly eyes the voice in my heart explained The voice in my heart explained The light carries little fairies Who hold tiny baskets of light-filled messages Their job is to deliver every message around the world Of the living things help spread them like your new butterfly friend Oh Cause it's like Caring what's in our hearts helps others care too Yeah, caring, caring is, is all around, around us, us if you, you only look, look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Yeah, caring, caring is, is all around, around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. I get it. As if on cue, one shy, beautiful lotus in the pond. Open each petal one by one. Hey, that's just like when I was writing down the things in the workbook on the lotus petals. So it relates. That's kind of cool. Slowly, 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 until, 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 slowly, until. She radiantly beamed back at me. Wow, that painting's coming along really well to you. The joy in her heart shone like a beacon for everything in the garden to enjoy. Two, caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. It's true. Caring is all around us. There is caring all around me. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. I want to be like the flowers and share the caring I feel inside to help others. I looked up at the sun and let all the warm, caring messages soak into my skin. The love in my heart taught me that I can send a caring message into the world to share with others. The message I want to send is, you are perfect just the way you are. You are perfect just the way you are. Yeah, you are perfect just the way you are. You are perfect just the way you are. Yeah. What would your message be? Throw it down in the chat. What would your message be? What would your message be? What would your message be? I'm talking about caring is all around us.
people around us if you only look Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. A little bumpy on there. Sharing is all around us. That's okay. If you only look. We're just Sharing studying. What's in our hearts helps others care too. We're learning. Caring is all around us. If you only look. What you learn about? Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. What's your message? Sharing is all around us. If you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Caring all around. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Think your own Caring thoughts. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Life goals. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Keep it a hundred. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Such a good experience. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care Yo. too. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Tia Richardson. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Caring all around. Caring is all around us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps others care too. Yo. Caring is all around <laughs> us if you only look. Sharing what's in our hearts helps in there. others care too. Yo, Tia. Yes. <laughs> Snaps. <laughs> Snaps on the book. Snaps on the paint. Thanks so much for being here. Can we see your painting again? There? Wow, you did that on the fly. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. What would Thank you... you. Do you do you have words to describe this? You're you're a wordsmith, a musician, a visual artist of all sizes and shapes, colors, lights. Um, I I don't, but <laughs> <laughs> I have a few words. Um, when I when I think of colors, I think of them like people as having their own personalities, mm -hmm. and so when I when I look at this and I see like the green and the yellow blending together and the way that the colors are interacting, um, I think of, I think of them like people. So as I'm painting, I'm looking for ways to have them, um, interact in, in heart, in harmony. And huh? the way I know I'm done is when the painting has like a feeling of harmony. Um, so I, I can look at different spaces in this and see where that's happening and, and other ways um, where there's edges and, and that's okay too. There's no right or wrong. So yeah, I can read this like a book. <laughs> Absolutely. And you, and you can too, you can do your, do um, those of you out there, um, not just you Wes, but you know, this is kind of the idea. Everyone um, can, can have a chance to explore their own journey through painting. Oh, fantastic. Thanks so much uh for giving us that explanation and i just have one more question um before we sign off um is there anything that you're learning about right now uh or something you've learned recently or something you want to learn about in 2023 hmm. um can be anything yeah um trying to think I'm learning a lot more about um, some of the science behind what I'm doing um, so I don't I, I don't have like a an education background and what I'm doing a lot of it is kind of intuitive and so I'm reading books um, I'm going to or, or just going to the bookstore and hanging out in a chair and reading books. <laughs> love um, that. Yeah. That's the best. Around... I love doing that too. <laughs> yes. Oh. Oh, I love bookstores and uh, psychology and just some of the science behind um, like some of what I was sharing earlier and 
why it it could become more accepted in our society today, some of these ideas um, that I think if we can embrace or think about collectively as a society, it can help make things better and you can kind of like help make make the world a better place. Love that. Make the world a better place, y'all. Everyone can do their part. Little things, little uh, butterfly flaps. You know, it made me think of the butterfly effect in the book when the, uh, you know, every thought that you think is like a butterfly flap of a wing that goes out and spreads the message of carrying out into the world. Kindness. Thoughts are things. Thoughts are things. Thoughts yes. are things. Thoughts are things. Thoughts are things. Caring is all around me. Thoughts are things. Thoughts are things. All right. Thanks every so much flap for joining. Of a butterfly wing. Thoughts are things. Yeah, every flap of a butterfly wing. Thoughts are things. Yeah, every thought of a butterfly wing. Every flap of a thought. Every think of a thought. Every thought of a flap of a butterfly wing. Flap of the flap of the flap of the flap of the flippity 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 flap. Autodidactic. Yes. Feeling it. The intuition. Intuitive teaching. You know, this is what we need to be doing. So for all you teachers, therapists, parents, carers of the world, human beings, we all need to work on this. I need to work on my social emotional learning. That's for sure. I feel like we all have a ways to go as a species, as a society. We can do this, you know? Let's just spread the love and uh, spread the caring, kindness, all that. We can do it. So... With that, I think we're gonna we're gonna close it up for the day, and uh, just let our our thoughts and butterfly wings go out into the world. So thank you so much, Tia Richardson. Thank you. Caring all around me. Go get it, everyone. <laughs> all right. Only look, sharing what's in our hearts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get some sign-off music here. All right, there we go. We got it. We're live. Thanks All so right. much, everybody. Thanks, everyone, in the chat. Appreciate Bye, you. All right. Peace. We'll see you on the flip side, y'all. All right. Take care.